One time I was playing a gig and a fellow came up to me and asked me if I liked Stan Getz, and I said, sure, he's one of my heroes. And he, that he, he said he thought so because he thought he could hear a little bit of Stan Getz in my playing. And uh, I thought that was one of the nicest compliments I've ever received. I didn't necessarily believe him, but I thought that was a nice thing for him to tell me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Jazz with Screaming Radio, Ralph the Mouth. Tonight, we're going to feature the Stan Gets after Gilberto album. It started a craze called the Bossa Nova, which uh, I'll get to here in a minute. I want to talk a little bit about Stan Gets because he doesn't get the respect that he deserves, I don't think. When you ask saxophone players, Oh, who do you like or who influenced you? They'll always go like to John Coltrane or Charlie Parker. Somebody might say Sonny Rollins or somebody else. But you rarely ever hear somebody say that Stan Getz was an actual influence. And I think that's a shame because he was, uh, to my way of thinking, he's one of the best saxophones there ever was. Um, he turned pro when he was 15, went out on the road with uh, Jack Teagarden's band. And... Uh, he was in this uh, Woody Herman's band uh, a few years later w with uh, three other guys. They called themselves the Four Brothers, and they uh, did this real tight unison stuff. They had a hit called Early Autumn, and it almost created a whole new sound, almost like a pre, has anybody ever heard of a band called Super Sax, uh, where they take these intricate lines and play them, and it sounds like a, a one-horn thing. That's what the Four Brothers were doing came to national attention. Who's this guy named Stan Getz? And uh, some people started calling him the sound because he had this wonderful sound. I used to call him Sweet Tone Stan. He just, you can just tell him immediately what he sounds like and that Stan Getz. Zoot Sims, one of the guys who was in the uh, Four Brothers with uh, with uh, Stan Getz, he, uh, he mentioned, he said that, out, that, that Stan was a nice bunch of guys leading to the fact that he had a multiple personalities, and I've heard all sorts of stories with him. There's this one story about Stan Getz, uh, where he, uh, as a lot of jazz musicians in the early 50s, they became kind of addicted to this stuff called heroin, and there's a story about Stan Getz actually robbing a pharmacy of morphine. Whew. Don't get don't get hooked on drugs, kids, they're bad, okay? <laughs> Uh, a couple other things about Stan Getz, just, just stories that you hear, the things that, remind, that are reminded of about Stan Getz. Uh, they asked uh, Lester Young what he thought about Stan Getz, and he just said, Stan gets the money. And then whereas John Coltrane said something like, everybody wishes they could play like Stan Getz. And uh, like I said, Zoot Sim says that, Stan Getz was a nice bunch of guys. I'm getting way ahead of myself on some of these things. What I wanted to talk about tonight was this album here, Getz Gilberto. It was uh, recorded in 63 and kind of introduced the uh, American to this thing called the Bossa Nova. Uh, you have to remember, go back to what uh, America was like in 63. That was before the Beatles. It was all kind of like the tail end of this, if you will, the mad men, I call it the cocktail culture thing that was going on in America, where uh, everybody was the latest hip, and the latest fad, the latest thing, what you ever wanted to do. Uh, they had a lot of dance crazes going on, and everybody was drinking and carrying on and having a good time, and all of a sudden, here comes this new little thing from Brazil with this uh, sexy little voiced uh, girl singing this song called The Girl from Ipanema. Uh, her name was uh, Astrid Gilberto, who she was the wife of the, the guitar player, Hal Gilberto. And uh, the, she came out and sang this uh, song called The Girl from Ipanema. And uh, it became a hit on the, on the radio. This was um, back in the days when you could actually hear kind of jazz type stuff on the radio. You know, rock and roll hadn't just completely overwhelmed the, the airways. There actually was a, a girl from Ipanema that inspired that song. Probably my favorite song on here is this song called Disafinado, which translated means slightly out of tune. It's a real long form song, but uh, it's, it's crazy how the, the, the melody for Disafinado fits when I'm playing the girl from Ipanema, because whenever I do a jazz gig, we usually end up playing the girl from Ipanema. And when I start soloing, I always quote 
this Afanado. It's a nice song. A couple of stories about this that reminds me of what happened to me on this. Uh, I was uh, trying to learn how to play saxophone, and uh, there were some people who were trying to learn how to play jazz, and we tried to get together one day, and I was trying to just pick out of the air the girl from Ipanema. And the first half of the song is pretty easy. It's just four or five notes that kind of repeat themselves over and over. And then you get to that bridge, and it just gets real crazy, and I messed it all up. And I remember they told me I needed to go home and practice, and it just kind of broke my heart. But I was just, I didn't know what I was doing anyway. I was just going completely by ear, and uh, it's a difficult song in that bridge. Uh, it cracked me up one time. I heard somebody talking about, if you want to hear a bunch of musicians, see a bunch of musicians scramble, try to change the key of Girl to Ipanema and see what happens in the bridge. Uh, and even today, you'll see people stumble all over when they're trying to improvise on top of that bridge. Because it, 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 what happens is it moves up, the tonic moves up a half a step, then it goes up a full step, then it moves up another half a step. And so you're running all these real close scales together, and that's easy to throw a bunch of what they call clams in there. <laughs> but the girl from Ipanema uh, has actually become the second most recorded song after Yesterday by the Beatles. I don't know how they come up with these statistics, but I bet you there isn't hardly a jazz combo around that has not played that song. And then uh, The Girl from Ipanema. It, uh, like I said, introduced this jazz craze called the, uh, uh, dance craze called this uh, Bossa Nova. But it was actually this thing here that was uh, recorded the year earlier with Stan Getz with a Charlie Bird, it was called the Jazz Samba. And uh, it introduced this song called uh, Desafinado in there and uh, a bunch of other couple of standards that became the bossa nova thing and this this became kind of a precursor to the uh, getz gilberto but this is probably one of the best albums in my books have ever ever been uh, recorded i uh i like the idea that some they try to record they, they mention how they uh, say this is contemporary music uh, that was about 60 years ago is this still contemporary i think it is <laughs> I got a list of these things, and you can see in here I've, I've collected uh, different things, and we've got contemporary music on there. We've got Constant Fidelity. I've got page after page. Dazzling Polychromatic. Dynatone. On and on and on, just to try to describe sound. I don't know. I, I just ramble on and get off to all sorts of things. Talking about uh, starting a craze, even... Dave Rubeck got involved with uh, the Bossa Nova and left an uh, album called Bossa Nova USA. I just wanted to show you some of the other albums I've got that were kind of connected with the Bossa Nova and just see how far crazy this gets. Here's Astrid Gilberto, one of her records. She was the lady who uh, sang The Girl from Ipanema and uh, she did some, uh, some, uh, some, some solo albums. I got to looking on here and uh, this guy named Dom Um Ramau was uh, featured on one of the records. And I got to thinking, well, he went on to play with Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66 as one of their percussionists. He was also one of the early percussionists in this group called Weather Report, which are just uh, totally different things. But uh, Dom Um Ramau was in there. And then just to, just to round out what I've got in for like kind of Brazilian type music, Here's Vince Guaralti and Bola Sete. You might remember Vince Guaralti from Charlie Brown uh, fame, but here's some Brazilian type music. And uh, here's one that's from uh, Brazil, Milton Nascimento. And I've always thought that was a real beautiful album cover with a picture of him on the front and a Jaguar on the back. <laughs> that's kind of a neat picture. And then just to show you what else I've got for Stan Getz, uh, I've got uh, some real real early stuff. I'll shuffle this around a little bit. This is some just early stuff on a kind of an obscure label called Metro Over the Rainbow. It's, it's a oldie, oldie, oldie. Here's one where he's teamed up with, with Dizzy Gillespie and this is just a barn burner. If you know anything about Dizzy Gillespie, that man played fast and Stan was able to catch, keep it right up with him. Here's one with uh, the Stan Getz Quintet with Jimmy Rady. It's a box set from Mosaic and uh, this is just a nice music. Him, Jimmy Rainey was a guitar player, and they had a uh, band together, and they, they ran a lot, a lot of intricate lines, like the uh, Four Brothers that he did down in with the Woody Herman band. And here's one 
Stan Getz, Kenny Barron, George Maz, Victor Lewis. This is one of the last things that he ever did. This was like volume one, and this was like basically volume two on the cassette. The other things I got by Stan Getz are his, uh, the last thing he did was Stan Getz with uh, Kenny Barron, just a duet, two, two set cassettes, people time. Some of the other notable things that you might want to think about if you ever want to check out Stan Getz, I've got this one called Sweet Rain. Uh, check out this lineup. Stan Getz, Ron Carter, Grady Tate, and Chick Corea is recorded in 67. And another one he's got was called uh, The Peacocks with uh, Jimmy Rolls. I used to play it a lot up at the radio station. That's a nice one, The Peacocks with Jimmy Rolls. And this other one, uh, Focus, is kind of an uh, experimental album where uh, they've got a lot of strings and things doing. It's almost like movie music, but it's a, it's a wonderfully fascinating thing to listen to. Stan Getz. Oh, here's the other one thing. One more thing I wanted to mention about Stan Getz. In 79, there was a thing from the State Department and Columbia Records, and I don't know how it all got together, but a bunch of U.S. musicians went down to Havana, and it was called the Havana Jam 79. And it was some Cuban musicians and some American musicians. And some of the jazz musicians that went down there was Stan Getz, Dexter Gordon, Woody Shaw, Bobby Hutcherson, a bunch of other guys. And, uh, but Mike Finnegan was down there, local legend Mike Finnegan was down there when he was playing with Steve Stills. He got down there, and there was a few other uh, American rock and roll type guys who went down there with him. Uh, but Finnegan tells the story, when Stan Getz got through playing, he, he asked Finnegan if he did okay. <laughs> and I think that's kind of funny that you know, Stan Getz is wanting to know, how'd I do? <laughs> Just a story I remember about Stan Getz. Check him out. Thank you. We'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>